nyali panjalang ni rakol jugon nyali gani garama mala jugon wana jang ma mala ganu mala jugon nyali wana jangga mala jugon nyali nyanyi Mala Jugun. We are Rapu people from Bunjalung country. We look after this country. Don't do wrong round here, this country. We don't harm this country here. We belong to it. Well, hello and a big welcome, growers, to the Great Local Lunch 2021, home cooked edition, as you're all aware. What a treat it is to be beaming into your backyards, your kitchen tables, your living rooms, uh, your, your, your front yards, wherever it is, your community gardens to celebrate and showcase the very best of our local harvest. Not even a pandemic will stop us growing and sustaining. And the National Sustainable Living Festival is charging ahead with our great local lunch, the seventh one. How good is that? I'm super, super excited to be able to present this edition of it as it is online. Firstly, as we saw with the video, we recognise the Aboriginal traditional custodians of the Byron Bay district, where we're broadcasting from, the Araqual people, and recognise their elders past, present, and emerging. As growers, we live, work, and connect with the soil. And up here, as you'll see, looking out from the views as I move around during the talk today, you will see this incredible country that we're broadcasting to you from and meet some of the amazing people growing and connecting and nurturing this country. This event marks the end of the National Sustainable Living Festival, which has been running over the month of February. For those of you who don't know, this is the 23rd National Sustainable Living Festival. And what a remarkable achievement that is for any event to keep evolving, growing and nurturing the very, the very presenters and, and suppliers and, and inspirers of information for 23 years. I'm looking forward to the next 25, let's say. Today, we're connecting with growers from around Australia who are leading the way to a more sustainable food system from their own backyards. We'll also be dropping in on some community gardens and urban farmers to see how they are celebrating. I can't wait to see what you've all created from your harvests and uh, you'll get to have a little look at what, uh, what's being created on our harvest shortly. Before we get started, can I just remind everyone who's joining us on Zoom today to make sure you, your Zoom name is the same as the name you registered with, that way it'll make it a lot easier for our behind the scenes people to know who's sitting and waiting in the green room. It's a little thing, but it's massive. It'll really help our team out um, because they need to find where you are on the guest list. Also, no event like this, particularly under the conditions that we've been under over the last 12 months could happen without incredible team at the National Sustainable Living Festival. Andrea Kimbrell is our event producer and she's joining us from, from Melbourne. Andrea, Andrea, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, I'm, I'm here and I'm here to take any sorts of questions that we have from the audience today. So if you see the Q&A down below you on the bottom of your screen, just pop your questions for Costa or the speakers in there and I might just pop up throughout the day to uh, let you know what you're asking. Great, see you then. Thanks, Andrea. You've done an amazing job uh, trying to trying to organise this festival over the last 12 months with it on again, off again, on again, off again, off kind of arrangement. To you and all the team, uh, 
congratulations. It's just fantastic that so many events have taken place over the month of February online and some quite a few uh, face to face as well. So uh, look, without any further ado, I think it's time to get this party started. And, you know, I'm here in the beautiful box. Uh, one challenge being Greek. Challenge being Greek is don't talk with your hands because you'll knock your microphone out. So if someone could just uh, cable tie my hand behind me, uh, then you won't lose my audio feed. <laughs> All right, where was I? It's time to get this party started. And behind me, I have farmed my own crowd of people uh, from the district who are doing amazing things. And it gives me awesome pleasure to run around the table now and uh, allow them to introduce themselves to you. So uh, here we go. Uh, where will I start? Maybe I'll start up here. Venetia, how are you? I'm so good. It's wonderful to have you here. Tell us. Mm -hmm. Tell us about yourself and what you're doing. Um, I'm a, I call myself a large scale gardener. So I co-manage an agroecology system at the farm in Byron Bay. Um, I have two acres that I've run with a group of really amazing other growers and gardeners and a team of volunteers. And we grow market garden vegetables and we have a perennial system as well. So it's an evolving forest system that's producing a huge amount of food. It's a real, really beautiful thing to be a part of. Wow. Well, thanks for being at the table. Thanks for having me, Tosma. Awesome. Now, over here, um, let's. We we had a chat a little while earlier, Jacob. You've you've come down from the Sunshine Coast, Southern Cross University. What are you doing up there? Um, I'm doing some part time research, part time academic work, and I'm interested in native grains. So, I've been doing some nutritional analyses on grains and sort of trying to connect with different mob um, in this space. Um, so I'm Gomeroy, shout out to the Gomeroy mob. Um, yeah, just trying to get these native grain thing happening a bit more. Yeah, so thanks for having me here. Absolute pleasure and really keen to hear about the work that you're doing. All right, so uh, where, where are we here? I, I think uh, Peter, Peter Hardwick, forager. Yeah, how are you going, Pastor? Lovely to have you around the table. You're, you're up to all sorts of things in your foraging lab. What, give us a bit of a background, give people an idea of what you're up to in the foraging space. Yeah, I've been out um, harvesting things like bunya cone and uh, roasting them and turning them into uh, vinegar. So I actually captured a, a wild kombucha culture um, and, uh, from a pandanus original and been making that into vinegars. And so, yeah, I'm basically a food ingredient inventor and, and I avoid cherry picking uh, Indigenous culture. I'm very aware of, you know, of a protocol, necessary protocol and respect for Indigenous culture in that process as well. Well, wow, thanks, Pete. I can't yeah, wait to yeah. stir the pot and, uh, <laughs> and see, see, what, see what ingredients you're yeah, dropping into the right. cauldron. Yeah, yeah. Hannah, Hannah Robertson, <laughs> our little flower farm, that gives it away. What's your take on flowers and how valuable are they? We're small-scale flower farmers and um, we've been doing that for about six years locally. But part of our buzz is to get other people growing in small-scale places so that they can supply their own communities with flowers so there's no transport or travel involved in the industry or as little as possible. Fantastic. And uh, is it correct to say that uh, our this wonderful... This morning's harvest, yeah. <sighs> Look at those dahlias. They're awesome. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Let me tuck in here behind, uh, behind the beards. <laughs> it's good to see you. Good to see you too, Pastor. Tell us, where are you at? What are you up to? Um, so at the moment, I'm growing a small mushroom farm in my backyard in Lismore. So it's a small micro urban farm. And I also coordinate uh, the Young Farmers Connect movement. So there's a whole community of young farmers that are all really interested in local food economies all around Australia. And we provide a lot of support and networking for, for other growers who are keen to get into the industry. Joel Orchard, it's a pleasure to have you here at the table with us. Thanks, and what a mix you're adding. As you can see, look at this, six people so far, and we are touching on such a broad spectrum of food and our food future. So 
next next to me here, we we bumped into each other up at uh, Newry Bar yesterday. Yeah, but tell me a little bit about where you fit on the table today. It's a pleasure to be here, Costa. Thank you. Thanks for putting on this great Zoom and to everyone involved. Um, I'm a bit of a growers groupie, you could say. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that in, on camera right now. But I, I work up at a, pre, a hospitality precinct called Harvest in Nuriba and help them, I could say, na navigate um, uh, working with our local growers, doing as much as we can on the ground with them. And um, second to that, I'm about to release, uh, with the help of some beautiful people, a not-for-profit called Farmers Footprint into Australia, which will be the Australian chapter of a US not-for-profit, which wants to shine the light on how we can move our food system to healthier practices, have healthy people and a healthy planet. Thanks, Blair. And this is the thing, being able to connect you with these groups, all of their, their links, all of their connections will be on the the feed later the team down in melbourne will put up all the, the the social media connections so that you can orbit around what these amazing growers are doing now we're down to james james okay, lovely up? to have you here great pleasure um tell us what you're up to yeah so my name's james i'm a environmental engineer and sustainability manager i've been working in the food and, and brewing industry uh, for a number of years now. And uh, I'm also, you know, backyard gardener, a bit of a long distance runner. And, and I also um, I have a podcast called The Overview Effect, which is all about bringing people together to talk about these big picture ideas around nature and humanity and sustainability. So I'm so blessed to be around a table with such influential people today. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, so good. Well, thanks for uh, putting your iron in the fire. And uh... What's the name of the podcast? It's called The Overview Effect. So check it out. Anyone that, you know, listens to deep and meaningful podcasts, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Podcasts are definitely such a big thing at the moment. People can, can just listen and connect with, with all sorts of topics at the drop of a hat, whether you're travelling, whether you're jogging, no matter where you are. So uh, I'm not in a podcast here with you. We're live. Charlie Arnott, give people a bit of a background 30 second lift elevator. I'm in the lift with you. What's I'll, going on? I'll make it, I'll make it quick, Costa. Um, we're talking about podcasts. I've got a podcast too called The Regenerative Journey, believe it or not. Um, and it's all about collecting stories about people's regenerative journeys and, and, and bringing those stories together around food and farming. And I'm, I'm a regenerative farmer from Burrawa in um, um, Wiradjuri country down there. And it's wonderful to be sharing a table with other farmers and foragers and researchers to celebrate food and farming and, and life. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I also believe that along with one of our other special guests who you're going to meet in a minute because he's actually very busy over there in the kitchen, but I believe that you, along with uh, Marie Lowe's, are working on a project called Eat Dirt, which totally ties in with everything we're doing here today. Totally. So we're, uh, it will be a, a web-based documentary series and we are gathering uh, stories and um, the, the the lives and the, the, the research and the going to um, different farms and different locations around Australia to gather that information, to put it into some wonderful um, episodes, to tell people about the, 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 um, the wonderful um, opportunity that Australian farmers have to grow wonderful food and for eaters to be growing, to be eating that food. I'm a farmer. We have a feeder and an eater. There's three of us and we're putting it all together into, into a series that um, yeah, really highlights the wonderful um, uh, opportunity we have in Australia to farm and to feed and to eat good, nutritious food. And I mean, what a great combo. I mean, because somewhere in that process, we fit in to one of those canisters. And that's what the Sustainable Living Festival is all about, connecting people. So, Charlie, look forward to chatting later. Um, thanks, everyone. So you can see what I've put together as uh, my crowd farm feast here up in, uh, up in uh, the back blocks of, of Byron and Ballina. So now um, it's, uh, it's time to, uh, to introduce you to our other special guest. But before I do, I took a trip a little earlier on the weekend over to the Lismore Farmers Market to check out some of the local harvest. And can I tell you, I wish 
I had my van because I would have loaded it up. I wish I had a grower's market like that in my backyard. It was so great to meet the people. Have a look at what I was a part of yesterday. Can I put that extender in? Oh, yeah. Well, there's, there's a little bit of a taste of what I got to see over at the markets yesterday. And uh, to any of the, the locals that are watching, thanks for uh, an amazing welcome. It was so good. I got to meet so many people. And like I say, I wish I could have taken some of the produce with me. But I did bring some for our chef who, uh, here in the kitchen, um, come with me now come with me over into the kitchen because I want to introduce you to our, uh, our, next, our next guest. Um, and he's not ready to cook up a feast. He's already here cooking up a feast, an absolute feast. And he's one of Australia's most highly acclaimed Indigenous chef. I'm talking about Clayton Donovan. Clayton, it's lovely to be here and have you with us cooking. It's extreme pleasure to be with you honor to like finally meet you <laughs> <laughs> we've been ducking and weaving each other for so many years on like in a similar path but yeah it's a, and it's an honor to sit around and get to cook for you guys today and yes yeah, lovely weather lovely produce so tell us just for, for everyone watching um how did you get into cooking um by what? default so yeah i was into music um, playing a couple of bands and then um, went into um, into law and then um, yeah um, just found my real passion was food and my grandfather always said to me like um, if you could do anything for free and it was your passion you'd be the richest man in the world and silly enough I took up cooking. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean how, do, how does it feel? I mean you're right in your heart space aren't you? Oh I get to share. Um, something that's very close to my heart and with the cultural, cultural food and um, all the experiences that I've had with um, all the great chefs that taught me all over the world. Um, it's just, it's yeah, a pleasure to be able to, you know, have an industry where I've got that and I, I get to share that. And you're, you're at the forefront of, of really exposing these, these ingredients, these native ingredients that we have here in Australia that, uh, are so little known. Some of some of them are. I mean, people know some things, but what are some of the the the, the things you're seeing and, and are excited about? Um, basically, the the connection now and with the movement of all different people just getting on board and understanding the value now of uh, the native foods of Australia, being medicinal, uh, nutritional, um, sustainable. Um, you know, three great keywords. Yeah. For, for anything um excuse me it's a bit hot in here yeah yeah it's, it is we are <laughs> if the heat is too much in the kitchen don't hang out now, all right so take us through what are, what are you preparing and sharing for for all of you to to appreciate and get to know as far as ingredients go well 
Um, I'm just going to do like a simple couscous and I'll get some water. We're going to flavor it. We've got, got some uh, like lemon myrtle. Oh, lemon myrtle. And I mean, anyone can grow a lemon myrtle at home. They're a wonderful treat. And that's just... So what we're going to do is we're just going to drop that in the water. Simple. And then um, a bit of seasoning. So we've got some uh, salt bush. Yep. So we're just going to season it with salt bush. And then um, we've got some of the discarded skins of the finger line. Ah, so you've pushed... You've pushed all the little caviar um, balls out. Yeah. And that's just the, the leftover remains. shell. Look at that. Yeah. So we're going to, that's going to flavor the, like a stock. Oh, imagine. Yeah. That would just be simple. super strong. Yeah. So three ingredients. Yeah. 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 And then um, look, I'm just going to throw a little bit of lemon in there. Not the whole lemon, but a bit of juice. That's basically it. Um, and then we've got something from Peter. It's his um, kelp salami. Oh, wow. So that's <laughs> so like gonna, dried that's be, yeah. dried kelp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a salty aspect as well. So we're just going to give a little bit in there. And then obviously when I um, put the dish together, I might just uh, tweak it a little bit more to see how it goes, like flavour-wise. But, yeah, that's just basically the stock. And then we... Both Christmas is done. Wow. I'm not that clever, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that combination, yeah, that yeah. combination and making making these ingredients easily accessible for, for everyone watching. And, like, and this is it. That's what it comes out to be. So obviously I'm going to pick out the salt bush and the, the remains and the garlic. I've got to put the garlic, but I'll throw it in now. But, yeah, we picked that all out, and then I'm just going to flavour that again with some... Um, macadamia nut oil. Uh, it's got some lemon myrtle in it. So we're going to just run that through. And um, that's going to be a base of like a, a salad, saladish kind of dressing kind of thing that is yeah. moist, but it still has a, a bit of body to it, a bit of texture. How do you feel when you you, you piece these these recipes together? Um, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It does get hot here. It's hot. Um, it's hot up here. Well, when it works, it's great. So, like, half, a lot of them, when I had my rest on the jarring tree, it was, um, there was a couple of them that come out with mistakes. So, obviously, being chef and running your own business, I was a little bit fatigued one day, and I was um, just doing some <laughs> carrots. Um, and then I had a pickling liquid. I did a mirin and bottle seed pickling liquid. Um, I threw the carrots in the pot. That was fine. And I just made like a, a threw butter and um, some aniseed myrtle and just did the fondant and it just cooks down the, the water and the butter and absorbs and turn it over and gets a nice caramelization. Beautiful. But then I had this other pot. But I had another thing going on where I was going to just um, pickle lightly some broccoli stems just rather than waste. So I was going through a bit of experimental time where I was making sherbets out of. Um, discarded vegetable parts like uh, I made a carrot at a carrot and lemon myrtle sherbet to go on a dessert but out of the skins of the carrot wow. so I was still going with the broccoli and what I what I did was I turned around and I threw it in the wrong way threw it in the wrong the wrong pan and it was beans into the wattle seed in the mirror and I pulled it out and I just let it sit there and I tasted it and it was like like a hamburger burger gherkin yeah, it's just kind of gave that element. So, yeah, uh, kind of went with a slider with that. And, yeah, and so it was born. It was born. So there's a great message for everyone at home when it's been a long day or a long week and you mess up the cooking or you burn something or you put something incorrectly, don't throw it away. Let it sit. <laughs> give it air. Give it life. Give it room to breathe. And you could come up with the next recipe. That, know. That, that Clay's going to gonna, um, uh, share with the world. So, uh, yeah, don't underestimate your mistakes. No, never. Never underestimate your mistakes. And what's happening here? Oh, I've got some uh, pig paste leaves. Let me just throw that in there. And we've got a bit of rosemary. Bang that in. Simple. Um, 
the macadamia, macadamia oil. oil. And then just to lighten that too, we just got a light flavor of olive oil. Yeah, just keep it moving. I just want to lightly kind of toast the outside of the leaves and give it that flavor of the rosemary to run through it. And that's that's it. Nice and simple. And what are you going to include that in the in uh, it's the mix? With the uh, the quinoa salad. Yeah, no kiss and telling. Okay. All right. <laughs> but there's something else interesting at the back here. We've got a um, let's see, uh, pandanus vinegar that Peter did who he's telling you about. It's amazing. So we're just throwing in some garlic, some local garlic and a lemon rind, a bit of rosemary as well. And we've got these beautiful mushrooms, local mushrooms that we got. I'm just going to chuck it in. They're the mushrooms from Joel. They're <laughs> the mushrooms from Joel. Yeah, so I've Joel, been... who we just met, these are his mushrooms. They couldn't be any more local. They're just beautiful. Look they at are. Them. Look They're at lovely. Them. Look at that. Lid on. Just keep on. Obviously, it's been to boil. I'm going to turn that off the heat now, just let it uh, in the residual heat. And then we've got some uh, Davidson plum vinegar that Peter did as well. Yep. Oh. <laughs> That's just going to bang a bit through. Hopefully, I don't set off the fire alarm. Yeah. Well, Clay, we'll come back and see you a little later on. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, let's head out here because we're going to cross now. I want to get you out enjoying, enjoying the view. So uh, we'll just set this up. And now we're going to cross to Councillor Rohan Lepper um, because the city of Melbourne is the principal partner of the National Sustainable Living Festival and Rohan leads the environment and heritage portfolio and is the deputy lead for sustainable building and city planning portfolios. Now, Rohan, I, I heard that you describe yourself as hellbent. I, I like people that are hellbent. <laughs> it's, it's always a good sign if, if you're totally hellbent. But uh, Rowan, you describe yourself as hell bent on building a sustainable city. Welcome, Rohan, and uh, take it away. Thanks, Costa. Thanks so much. Um, I hope I am most of the time. It can be tricky at times. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me as well. Can I, like Costa, also acknowledge uh, the First Nations people? Um, I'm broadcasting from the city of Melbourne, so I respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners here, uh, the Bunurong, Boonwurrung and the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation, uh, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, uh, but also to um, Kulin elders who may be joining us, but First Nations elders from across uh, the country who may be joining us today. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, I wish I could clink glasses with you in reality. Uh, in the past year, we've all got used to very different ways of gathering, uh, but however you've joined us today, congratulations. Um, as I said, I'm at home in the city of Melbourne, and this is the densely developed heart of our city. And no matter the density, growing food in our homes and yards or balconies uh, takes us all much closer to a more sustainable food system. Um, the City of Melbourne is far from alone in facing challenges to food security, of course. Uh, we all know about the impacts of climate change, of population growth and development in arable land. Uh, these can all threaten our resilience. We also know it's been a shocker of a year for public health and the economy, uh, but I reckon it's been a fascinating one for community resilience. Uh, while many are enjoying prosperity in our city, our data tells us that one in three City of Melbourne residents report experiencing food insecurity. Uh, those on JobSeeker and JobKeeper, international and local students, uh, adults under 34, uh, residents on a low income, public housing tenants and those with English as a second language are frequently the most vulnerable. So we're going to work with those cohorts, in particular in March, uh, asking our community what our priority should be for our health and wellbeing plan that will guide our work over the next four years. Uh, and local government, I think, can actually do a lot in this space. 
Uh, we have a food policy called Food City, and it recognises the impact that food has on our physical and mental health and on social connectedness. Um, that policy commits us to creating new community gardens and programs. It commits us to a whole range of things. It also commits us to strengthening partnerships. And so, of course, we are proud supporters of our beloved Sustainable Living Festival, as we have been for many years. And again, thank you to everyone who has joined us today. Um, I hope today will be another great opportunity to discuss local and sustainable food networks, even if we are doing it virtually. So let's keep thinking about how we can improve everyone's access to fresh and healthy and local and sustainable food. So enjoy the local lunch, the great local lunch of 2021. Thanks everyone and thanks Costa. Rohan, thank you for, for what you're doing um, at that level of government. Uh, I believe and agree with you when you say local government has so much opportunity in the current circumstances to create change at the ground level, but also drive that chain further, drive that change further up the chain of government. So from a, a, a local growers point of view, what programs in Melbourne could local growers access to help build their capacity to help feed more of the city? So here in the city of Melbourne, we have uh, some composting programs where we get community groups to band together. We don't try and um, identify those community groups. As soon as government says, here's where a community can be formed, it tends to not work. But if uh, there is a community forming and that community wants to establish a community garden or a composting program or a street garden, well then, we can deal with all of the public liability issues and we've got uh, systems in place that can establish that infrastructure or establish those programs. Um, our community food guide online, if anyone wants to have a look, just type in community food guide on the City of Melbourne website. Um, that's your one-stop shop to help look at some of these things. Uh, we think it's a good start and um, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's a good place to start. Well, Rohan, thank you for, for all the work you're doing, agitating change across all levels. It's a fantastic thing to know that there's people at these different, at these different layers of government and community driving the change. So uh, on behalf of us all at the Sustainable Living Festival, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Costa. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, Rohan. And at this point, I'd just like to, to acknowledge and thank our, uh, our major partners, uh, the City of Melbourne and of course, City West Water. So a big call out to them for their support to keep the National Sustainable Living Festival rolling along. Now, this is one of these crazy cathartic parts of this live event, because what we're going to be doing is throughout the day, we're gonna take a journey through a whole bunch of community gardens and urban farms and, and gardeners who are doing great work for their local food communities. Some of them are even holding their own homegrown feasts today. Um, but we're also going to try to visit as many growers gardens. And, and that to me is the best part. Kitchen tables, backyards, and see what people have been growing this season. So we're going to kick it off with our first visit. And this is to Anne. Anne, I can see you there. How are you? I'm well, Costa. How are you? I'm really well. Tell me, where do you fit in as, as a backyard grower and, and food change maker? Um, I'm, I'm a grower. I have a community garden plot as well, and I grow in my garden. Um, so we've been able to um, use about 70 to 80% of what we eat is what we grow. Wow. So yeah, and, and um, at home, we've got a lot of fruit trees and a lot of the vegetables um, I grow at the community garden, but we grow our own herbs, we grow our own, some of our own spices. We, we, I mean, I just keep trying to add more things, you know, more to the list of stuff that we grow. 70 to 80%. You are yeah. an inspiration, Anne. And even if people listening get to... First of all, 10%, then 15%, then 20%. What a wonderful, wonderful role model you are. So thank you for sharing 
what you are up to and showing everyone watching that it can be done and the statistics prove it. Thanks yeah. a lot, Anne. The good thing about it also, I just want to jump this in, is that the waste, we don't put out waste to landfill because so much of what we eat is fresh produce. Um, so it's, it's such a big impact that we can all have if we try and grow a little bit more. Thank you very much, Anne. And uh, that, that little tip is something we can all participate in. Now from Anne, we're heading over to Caroline on Wurundjeri land. Caroline, lovely to, to welcome you to the festival. Hey, how Costa, are, how are you going? Look, it's wonderful to see your happy face. Look at you. You're shining. <laughs> this is brilliant. Tell this us, is, where so do cool. you fit in as a grower? Yeah, so we live in a tiny little kind of townhouse cottage in Richmond. Um, so we're trying to make the most of our land. Um, but we are trying to grow kind of following your advice, really. We watch Gardening Australia every week. So we've got things like zucchinis and tomatoes. So today we've made a lasagna from all of the produce we can grow. So I don't know if you want to come have a look. So yeah, we've definitely. Made this lasagna, it's got zucchini from our garden, cherry tomatoes, basil from our garden. We also go to um, Abbotsford Farmer's Market. And so everything else kind of comes from there. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what we've made. So this is what the produce looks like over here. Got some of our tomatoes and eggplants and things. And that's our garden outside. So we've got quite a small bit of space, our worm farm in the corner. But yeah, we've tried to make the most of a tiny little space, really. And Carolyn, for everyone watching, you've proved it. And that, <laughs> that's, the, that's the wonderful detail. So congratulations on what you're achieving in a small space and for, for really being an, a, a role model and example to other people thinking, well, I don't have much space. Yeah, it's definitely possible. You just have to get creative. Well, thanks a lot, Carol. And now we're heading over to Heidi, or is it Haiti? Oh, we just lost Haiti. Hello, Costa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yes, look yeah. at that. Look at that bountiful table. Tell us, walk us through what you've got growing there. You're wonderful. <laughs> we've got so many things. I just never know what to make when it comes to cooking because we've got, you know, uh, tomatoes, zucchini, almonds, potatoes, uh, spinach, lettuce, beetroot, mayonnaise, pickles. So it looks like a hamburger day. So we're having some hamburgers today. <laughs> but, but there's also all these jars that I can see of, um, of preserved and pickled produce as well. Oh, yeah. Lockdown is fantastic for preserving. I've got to say, my partner preserved 90 bottles of Posada last weekend on the lockdown weekend. And we've got like um, apricots and pears from two trees in our Coburg garden. We've got about 90 jars of them as well to keep us going. <laughs> <laughs> that is phenomenal. Well, look, thank you for sharing. Is, is that a little character I can see in the background there? She can show you how to preserve some tomato seeds if you want. Oh, wow. Well, look, that is, yeah, show us. Do you want to squeeze the seeds in? So we're just going to squeeze our tomato seeds in there, put some water in, and after four days, sieve them out so the little seeds don't have that really jelly stuff on them and preserve them for next year. Well, there you go, everyone. You have seen it firsthand. No tomato is safe. You can get the seeds, preserve them, and grow them for next year. Heidi, thanks for being a part of the, uh, of the, the run around the gardens with us. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thanks, Costa. Keep up the good work. <laughs> so now um, we're off to meet Sarah. Hello, Hi, Sarah. This is Hugo and Kiara as well. Hello, Hugo. Hello, Kiara. Um, what have you been growing and what's on the menu down at uh, Shea Sarah? What, what have we been growing? Let's show you what we've been some of what we've been growing. Um, lots and lots of tomatoes. Our veggie garden has started to look a bit worse for wear now because it's the end of summer. But um, so we've been growing tomatoes here. Um, 
We've got artichokes growing. This is our little um, pumpkin patch. Should we have a look at the... So this is a Queensland blue pumpkin. Oh, wow. On the that's way. a beauty. That is a beauty. That, yeah, that's a, yeah, here's a couple more. Because this one escaped its veggie garden, didn't it, Hugo? <laughs> so... Yeah. I get to say Migo, Migo. Yeah. So these are tromboncinos. So that's something we hadn't grown before and we thought it was a zucchini substitute. So they grow, they start off small and then they grow enormous. So um, I don't know if there's a really huge one here. They are pretty big though. That's my hand and the tromboncino. Whereabouts are you located? Uh, we're in Doreen, so northeast of Melbourne. Northeast, wow, yeah. that's a mighty patch, and uh, what a what a great garden you've got growing. There's so much produce, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, we love it. Thank you very much. I Thanks for you. see you, Hugo. And who's that there? Kiara. Oh, hi, Kiara. Thanks for joining us, Hugo. Thanks, Kiara. See you later. See you later. Also, <laughs> <laughs> so, Bye. But wow, that that pumpkin looked fantastic. Well, that was the first that was the first of our um, our uh, five five minute five stop garden visits. And uh, on the next one, I'm going to go in and I'm going to utilize our wonderful panel to help ask a few questions and be a part of the craziness. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, now. I, one, one thing that we want to throw out early on is we want to see more of those gardens and, and maybe the next one on here could be yours. So if you want to be involved at this last minute, you still can because we've got an Instagram photo challenge for you. We're opening up the last round of home garden visits to the five, yes, five best Instagram pics of your garden or equally like that lasagna, your homegrown lunch. Post a pic on your Instagram feed and tag at NSLF Festival, all one word, and uh, caption it saying, visit my garden table, plus your first and last name so we can find you on the guest list here. And be sure to use hashtag great local lunch. And hopefully we might see you and your garden and your lunch or what's left of your lunch by the time we get there here on the live feed. So. Enjoy, enjoy the next steps and uh, can't wait to see who posts some pics for us. Now, at this point, we're going to head back to school because we're headed to Bond Beach Primary School and their Green Thumbs group. So uh, are they there somewhere? Are the, are, are the Bond Beach team there? We're here. You're here? We're here. Oh, there we are. Yes, I can see. Hi, Costa. Hi, Costa. Yeah, fantastic. Amy, Jade, and I see that you've got some of your green thumbs. Can you introduce what the, uh, the um, BPS Green Thumbs is all about? The green thumbs, well, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Our Green Thumbs Garden, we started our garden about eight years ago now. It was a fairly deserted space and we've since we've built an amazing food garden and we teach the kids how to um, grow, grow the food and then we take it into the kitchen, into kitchen class and we eat it. Everyone gets pretty excited. At the moment, we've got heaps of tomatoes. Where's our tomatoes? Heaps of tomatoes. What are you going to do with your tomatoes, Chloe? Uh, we're super excited to eat them and cook them, but we're going to make sure we save the seeds for spring. Have you got, uh, Chloe, have you got some uh, seed saving techniques? Not yet, but I yeah. will. Learn yeah, fan <laughs> fantastic. We had one just uh, pop up from one of our gardeners. So uh, you'll be able to sit down and watch that maybe tonight with mum and um and see what they did, squeezing them into a jar and letting them, uh, letting them uh, sort of semi-ferment to then save. So good night. what else are you doing with your produce down there? Charlotte, what have, what have um, we been doing? Hi, Charlotte. Yeah, jump, um, jump in. <laughs> we've been cooking with them. We've made um, sauerkraut, but that ended up being fed to 
chickens. <laughs> only, um, only some of it. <laughs> only some of it. Um, and we also made pickled vegetables. And, and we the- picked some of these fennel seeds mm-hmm. to put in them. Do you enjoy your time in the garden? Yep. What's yes. one of your favourite activities? Chicken coop. Oh, the chicken coop. Oh, how many chickens have you got down in there in the garden? Um, oh, nine. <laughs> nine. Yeah. Show, show Costa. Who's that one? Shadow? <laughs> I think this one's called Shadow. Yes. Hello, Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so Amy and, and Jade, how many students have you um, introduced into the Green Thumbs program? The school, we have just over 300 kids in the school. Um, most of these guys are in grade six now and they've been a part of the program since they're in prep. So we filter through 300 kids over, we see them for one semester a year. So they have 10 sessions out in the garden and 10 sessions in the kitchen. So they get to see um, the seasons transpire and they get to harvest their seeds, grow their seeds, build their soils, <laughs> collect, collect their seeds. They get to cook it and eat it. We encourage them to take the recipes home and try out their, their new cooking skills with their families at home. And, and I believe you've even won uh, some awards with the program. We did. You actually gave us an award many, many moons ago when it was back in the day when it was Grow It Local. And um, I think that was the first year that we'd sat down and um, sort of really, I suppose, acknowledged ourselves for the work that we'd done and the work that was coming up. And it really inspired us to keep on growing and teach these kids how to grow food and help them to um, just enjoy the process. Yeah, that was a loaded question, that one. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good one, though. Grow it local, local grower. Wow. Well, look, thank you to, uh, to, to the students that have come out with you. Uh, thanks for the work that you do, you're doing. Um, can people find you online to see what you're up to? We are. We post pretty much daily on Instagram, BPS Green Thumbs. Um, Amy's our Instagram queen. She's always, always posting a good photo of what the kids are learning or what we're doing in the community. It might be a farmer's market or a garden. So Fantastic. Well, thanks to, uh, <laughs> thanks to the team there out at uh, Bond Beach, uh, Green Thumbs, and keep up the amazing work. And thanks for being part of the Sustainable Living Festival 2021 online. It was thanks great to chat. Costa, bye. Thanks bye. for having us. Bye, bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, now we're going to head over to the Fairfield Community Garden and we're going to catch up. Here she is, Rose Kalak. Hi, Costa. Rose, it's lovely to meet you and it's lovely to have you as part of the uh, part of the festival. Tell us a little bit about the Fairfield Community Garden and how you're engaging your local community. Sure. I just want to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which Fairfield Community Garden is actually situated, which is the Rundry people of the Kula Nation and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. This land was never ceded and always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And we're really privileged to be able to be on this land. So Fairfield Community Garden, we've been here for well over a decade. Um, I'm going to try and... Um, flip around the camera so you can actually see some of my colleagues. This is our lunch and this Hello is what we're doing today. <laughs> this is, um, I'm going to show you a bit of a close up of what our, um, our dinner plate looks like, which is all local produce from everywhere here in Victoria. Oh, and even the flies, isn't that great? That's very Australian. So like breads and grains, and we've been working with farmers and, um, and collecting all of this. So it's fantastic to have. Um, so in terms of what we do, we're, we're a community-based organisation. Um, 
and we've got um, community composting here as well. And as well as that, we've got the tree project who's located here. I don't know if anyone knows about the tree project, but it links up urban farmers and, um, uh, sorry, farmers and urban communities and they grow plants, um, indigenous plants to revegetate areas that need revegetating. So it's a great program. Um, would you like me to show you around a little bit? So some so yeah. pictures? Please do. Okay, rather than just the... I'm getting used to this technology. So you've seen that and let's see how it actually looks out in the sun today. So this is kind of, we've got like a bit of a citrus bed here and this is where we grow our citrus trees. We've got some limes and some lemons. We've got, I mean, as other um, presenters have said, it's a bit kind of diminishing this time of year. The summer beds are sort of, this is our herb bed, sunflower bed. Um, things are sort of a, a bit wilting at the moment. And these are just, I'm gonna walk you through and just show you some of the plots that we have as well. So this is the extent of our garden over here, some plots. Um, I'll show you mine because I can. How Got old is your growing. garden? My plot is seven years old, but this overall garden, it's at least I think about 12 years old or possibly a bit more. Um, we're right up against the railway line but we haven't got any trains at the moment. Probably something worth noting about our garden as well is that we actually don't have tenure. So we're a garden without land tenure because we're on some land that um, at the moment, we're not sure what's gonna be happening. So we've got a little bit of a wasteland here um, because of some rail, rail works that were done. But um, it's, you know, we're hoping to be staying here, hoping to, we, we keep talking to the state government to make sure we can stay here. So that's a little bit of a, a run through in terms of what kind of what we're doing and what we're like here. Well, wow, that's fantastic. And you're also heavily involved in produce swaps and farmers markets. Yeah, like a lot of our produce actually came, the, the, the things we didn't grow ourselves, a lot of it came from um, connections we made through local farmers markets so, yeah I'm feeling the heat as well yeah <laughs> it is it is a little bit warm uh, where I'm standing but look and and uh, people can get in touch with you and join the garden are you looking for, for for more people to be involved well if we can get more land get some more land tenure and get some more land we'll be able to have more garden plots more gardeners but there's community areas that we can have people involved in the last Sunday of the month, we always have a working bee, which was today. Um, and there's, there's heaps of opportunities for people to get involved. Yep, I'd, I'd love to post all that information and more about the food that we actually had as well to just connect people up with farmers, connect yep. people up with local gardens. Well, thank you so much for being involved. It was wonderful to wander around your garden and uh, um, everyone jump on and check out what Fairfield Community Garden's up to online. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much for joining us. But wow, series, I'm very excited to cross to series. Series like the Sustainable Living Festival are a wonderful group of longevity. There is so much, so much of the very inspiration for sustainability around Australia comes from series and their, their resilience over so many years. So, so let's cut across to the team of series. <laughs> G'day, everyone. Go to Costa. Hi. How are you going? I am really well. Um, tell us a bit about what's on your plates because they look full. <laughs> um, look, we've just grabbed a couple of things from the garden. Uh, I've got like a kale and amaranth pie going on and some grain salad with lots of plums from last, you know, last couple of months ago. And they've been dehydrated, some tomatoes, cucumbers, just a mixed bag. So you, you're busy, uh, I mean... <laughs> Tell me about the connection, um, Rachel and Hemi, about, you know, the, the growing and then the cooking of the food through the Merry Cafe. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty great. Um, everything that we grow here, I'm kind of working with Hemi to develop a relationship there. And so everything we're growing goes straight to Hemi and then he cooks up a storm in the Merry Cafe on site. Yeah, so we do stuff like... Like last time, well, at the end of the year last year, we got a whole bunch of plums through. So we turned those into 
like a fermented drink and then what was left over from that we've dehydrated and they're in this little little grain salad number over here and so that kind of sums up what we're trying to do just turn each thing into three or four different things and i believe you're sharing one yeah, of those I recipes yeah i believe you're sharing one of those recipes to us the honey lane grain salad is that right that's the one that's the one and it's one of those recipes you can put whatever you've got in your garden in there so it doesn't have to be what's on the list you just make the list yourself now you've got some harv a harvest feast coming up each year what what do people need to know about that to be involved so this year it's going to look a little bit different instead of a huge festival we're going to do a harvest day um so there'll be lots of different little events that you can sign up to on our website um and that i think is the last weekend of March on the Saturday. And then you're also holiday. Yeah, we're going to do a big like three or four course dinner and that's just going to, whatever comes out of the garden the week before, we'll just put on some plates, dress it up really nicely and just get as much of the community together as we can. So, I mean, Ceres as, as a urban city farm has really been a community anchor. How important is that place that, that you're currently helping guide and direct and, and nurture forward. Well, yeah, you said it, Ceres is quite unbelievable. Um, I think that we have a beautiful space here and we're able to host lots of different people coming through, um, especially through education, through our courses, through getting schools to come through, through volunteer programs. Um, so, oh, and workshops as well is a huge part of series. So just like having people walk past just behind us every single day and being able to see what we're growing and interact and have conversations is pretty special. Um, I think also it's a beautiful story being able to grow our food here and then you can either buy it at the grocery and, or eat it made by Hemi in the cafe. Yeah, I must say whenever we come down and film with with the show, uh, having lunch at the cafe is always a pleasure. So uh, for anyone around the country, definitely when you come to Melbourne, put series uh, and the, the garden and the cafe on your bucket list so you can come and meet these wonderful food food champions. So uh, to all of you there today, I, uh, I really would love to have uh, joined that feast. It looks amazing, Hemi and Rach. Uh, keep up the amazing work and... Uh, <laughs> series you rock you really do <laughs> Thank God. see you later all right well yeah, yeah. oh there we go yeah see you, everyone <laughs> the technology is treating us well i'm really i'm really pleased there, there hasn't been any 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 major uh any major mix up so far uh although behind the scenes that's another story but uh front of house we're going really good so uh a big call out to everyone behind the scenes who's helping uh look after this now and i believe i did leave you a little premature and you didn't get to show us your table so and can you take us back uh, am i welcome you, you absolutely are, Costa. Um, <laughs> you probably had no idea that I had all of this no, um, no. laid out. So I'll start you with, with this. That's a Thai red curry. And these are all the homegrown produce that I uh, use to make it. I also make my own paste with, you know, these chilies and these are some of the ingredients in the, in the paste. Then over here, that's a, a, some potatoes I've harvested recently. And um, so we're having this for dinner. This is a, a, what we call, I, I'm of Indian heritage. So this is a, a meal that's, um, you know, my family really enjoy. And it's got called puri and bhaji. So the potato is made into what is called a bhaji. And these are puris, which are fried flatbreads. These are some of the ingredients along with the potato that go into it. Over here is just some general stuff that you know is growing at the moment, and I've just put it together in a little basket for you know so that you can see that. Uh, and then here I've got 
or some of the preserves. So these are different vegetables, preserved olives, asparagus, zucchini, um, cucumbers. And then these are some of the pickles. Then over here is a sauce, so like sauce. I do my own uh, passatas and tomato sauce and chili sauce, jams, um, what else? Um, then these are some of the spices that um, where I have to keep getting this camera in the right spot. Are you doing a great job, Anne? And your <laughs> supermarket, your it's supermarket is around. making me drool. <laughs> so these are some of the spices, uh, fennel, coriander seeds, and red uh, mustard seed also that I grow and collect. So yeah, that's um, that's basically a little run around the table. Wow. That and was that was a marathon run, and there was so <laughs> much to unpack. Your garden, your garden, your pantry, your kitchen is a absolute harvest supermarket. Thank you for showing us around. You are My inspirational. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this run around my table. People are saying they love puri bhaji. I tell you, I can smell it from here. Wow. <laughs> now, um, now before we move on to our next person, I thought we might just change location and just set the backdrop back into the kitchen to where to where all the craziness is around the table and uh, get out of the sun a little bit. Um, okay, let's come in here and um, all right. Now head over and see what uh, what Clay's up to and see how the the uh, the cooking's coming along. Clay, how's it going? Oh, I think it's another job. Oh. Yeah, so we're just throwing the fish down now. Um, basically, you're just going to finish off the oven. I've got all the uh, fennel fronts yep. that you usually discard and people throw away, but I've chucked it down as a base. And then I've thrown a bit of, of the um, macro oil over. I gave it a squeeze of lemon. And these are the salads. And these are the salads done. That's, yeah, so you've got your couscous. Um, you've got the eggplant, and all we're going to do is uh, we're just about to throw the uh, smoked mushrooms on there. All right. Well, there you go, everyone. That's moving to the next level. So uh, we're going to head catch up with uh, Peter Hardwick as um, as we we gather our uh, our next conversations. Here we go. Peter, it's uh, it's wonderful to be sitting at the table here with you. Now, your your foraging yeah. is what you're renowned for. Explain to people how you got into your foraging and 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 what what's happening with foraging nationwide at the moment. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I was foraging when I was a kid. I was like four years old. You know, just got out there. I was. My mother used to talk about lily pillies and I was really curious, what is a lily pilly? And I just got inspired by my mum talking about it, her child experiences. And, um, and I used to go up there sucking the nectar from flowers. So it's a, it's a thing that, a passion I just developed when I was a kid. And you're now working at your own wild food lab, which is the focus of your, your wild food research. Yeah, yeah. So I've been um, making um, vinegars, kombucha vinegars and and uh, you know developing new ingredients using fermenting a lot of fun and i captured a, a wild kombucha culture i don't know if you ever heard of pandanas i'm sure you heard of kombucha, yes. yeah. but, but you know pandanas fruit so i actually um you know people when i say captured that people imagine i go out there with a lasso and you know lasso a wild culture but so i grabbed some pandanas fruit put it into a sugar syrup and um it started bubbling and started to develop a mother on the on the top of the sugar syrup and so you can do that you can go out and capture a wild kombucha culture from native fruits and you can get your own wild kombucha culture going and then from that i started doing um native vinegars uh, with this wild native and you're working with Harvest at Nuri Bar. I was so, just finished, yeah. Yeah, so what's been your collaboration there? Yeah, so well, I would take the ingredients um, into, into the chefs and they would develop um, different dishes with those ingredients. And it's just been amazing over the last five years doing that. And, and along the way, I met Clayton. Uh, we had a hey. thing for the uh, <laughs> Wild Harvest Night where we had visiting chefs and Clayton came along and he launched that. He was the first 
first chef and and it's just been a lot of fun working with chefs from all over the country and our local chefs as well and the harvest chefs yeah and what do your crosshairs have on the horizon at the moment what are you aiming at what where, where do you see um wild food and and foraging going into the future yeah one of the things that really inspired me when i started to take it more seriously when i was um, a young man got really serious about um, researching wild foods is the potential to actually regenerate with wild food and pretty much this is what I think the old people did anyway they worked within the landscape and we're hearing more of course about the role of planting and they planted into the landscape like a giant permaculture system and that was something that was here in this country this is beautiful rainforest we call it the big scrub but it was just a beautiful permaculture forest that was massively productive and that the old people of this country, the Bunjalan and the Iraq, will maintain. And they planted seeds. And it's just an amazing thing to get back to that and appreciate that. And yeah, so the potential's there to regenerate the landscape again. So everyone, everyone can start to, to think differently about the wild foods that are growing around them. Yeah. And, and I think this has been one of the things that's happened over the last 40 years with you know, non-Indigenous people are starting to realise, hey, that there is something in, in the landscape, the native landscape that was always here, that was appreciated by the old people here. And, and I think one of the wonderful things is the sharing, you know, at the table, like today, sharing the walking together, as the old people would say, and, and sharing the food and, and sharing food um, that's been grown here for a long time. Well, Peter, thank you. Thank you for taking the time and, and sharing with everyone around the country that connection you have with wild food. And it's a connection that's around everyone. And it's just, as you say, it's a matter of seeing it. And, and, you, and you can start growing these native food plants in your own garden, which you know about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like these, some, of, some of these ones here, saltbush particularly, is a very easy, is, a, is an easy place to start. Yeah, and I think you were down at Indigigrow. Yes. Watching Peter, seeing Pete's beds of Karkala. Yeah, exactly. Well, cool. Peter, thank no, you. No worries. And uh, I believe that the meal's getting close, but I'm going to jump over to this side of the table because um, I want to I get Blair and Blair and Jacob. Jacob, um, jump over. Let's, let's, sort of, uh, let's sort of squash in here for a sec. Oh, 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 where are we going? Where are we going? Um, now, Lee, you mentioned re er earlier that you're involved with uh, research at Southern Cross University, and you guys are, are, are sort of collaborating and starting to work on on, on ideas as as far as as what what and where to take these these um, these seeds and these these native species. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Having a conversation about what how to get that going. Um, and led by a community of five and five and nine. And having discussions with other mob around as well. So, um, Gomoroi country, um, yeah, we'd like, to, I would really, that's my passion to see that happening in Gomoroi country. So, at the moment, we're just having the yarns um, and trying to, yeah, trying to pull in sources for different things, how we can get things moving. Um, we've, been, we've been beautifully advised from, um, from the guys at Black Duck Foods, Chris, um, and of course, I think everyone's probably familiar with Bruce Pascoe's work. Um, they, they've been helping to guide us in how they have, how, because they've, they've done a great job with native grains down in Malakuta Way. So through that, through their experience and, uh, and how they've been able to unpack that, we've been getting guided by what that might look like in the Northern Rivers. So the potential's there for us. All we need to do is sit and have some yarns with, with some of the key, key stakeholders in the region, um, sit down with MOB and offer up this opportunity because it certainly needs to be led from that and those decisions have to be made by the MOB. Um, it's it's, it's for, for us to help bring that into creation and people like Jacob will see that through. Do you feel like the climate at the moment is changing without a doubt is is there a 
is there a, a, a literally a, is, is is it bubbling up a people a people seeking this connection? I, I think um, across the nation, people have done that. That's something that we've been we've, we've been lacking in our culture is connection to country, and the importance of seeing whether it be native grains or native foods allows us a win window in back into that connection to country. And the indigenous people are there, and they're with, there's so many of them want to create that connection back to country for us. And it's super important for them, but it's also super important for us because then we unite and, and in, in understanding and then in purpose. And Jacob, you had a couple of, of, of different uh, seeds. You've, you've got a couple of different seeds with you. Yeah, check this out. Um, so this has come off Gomorrah country. Uh, this is our native Mitchell grass. And there's a little bit of native millet mixed in there as well. So we're going to do a little bit of a cook up there. But yeah, I didn't bring a lot back because a lot of it stayed out on country. And that's sort of the point is like this stuff needs to be inclusive of the mob. So it's all good sharing it here. But firstly, we have to make sure that our community needs it first and the benefits are going to community. So I've only brought you a little sample because the rest of it is in our people's belly, out on country and up in Brisbane. Shared it yesterday with a bunch of mob. Um, yeah, so I guess we're trying to bring that story together for Indigenous, non-Indigenous, but we want it to be led by First Nations people and whatever direction they want to take it in. That's up to them. We're just here to empower that. And give it the, give it the time and space it needs mm. to, to develop mm -hmm. at, 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 at a momentum that's appropriate, not, not, so. not driven by, by anyone yeah. else other than, other than the, the, the local community. Mm. Yeah. It must be nice to, to sort of be, be working on a different pulse. Yeah, it is. It's passion. Yes, yeah, it's, it's my passion for sure. I'm, I'm loving it. It's not even work. It's just, um, yeah, it's a real, yeah, it's a real beautiful thing to share it back with people. Yeah, so if we can keep going with it. Wow. Well, Jacob, thank you for for, for joining us today and for sharing for sharing this this layer of, of projects that, that, are, that are happening. And it's wonderful that the Sustainable Living Festival can, can sort of get a window into these collaborations and know that they're collaborating in a, in a way that's res respectful to, as, as Jacob said, the local communities and, and their, their history and their knowledge and their resources. So uh, thanks, thanks guys for, for having a chat. And, um, where I, I believe those those plates are starting to to fill up. We're going to head over to the Cockatoo Community House, but before we do, let's just do a quick pan around the plates. There we go. That's um that's looking very appetising. Those mushrooms that you saw earlier look perfectly done. Thanks, thanks, Clay. That's all good. All right. I'm just a bit tangled up here. Uh, where will we go? I think we'll go outside and let the uh, let the table get set. All right, it's all happening, everyone. I hope you're enjoying. I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am. What a what a pleasure to speak to Jacob and to hear about something like this. And he said to me earlier how his inspiration has come. From not only being on country, but also, um, you know, reading and 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 connecting with uh, with Uncle Bruce Pascoe and the work that he's doing, and there he is harvesting different grains from up up in on on his country. It's really exciting stuff. Uh, let alone the flavours, as as Clayton has talked about, and then those homegrown elements that some of which are in some of our gardens. It's a it's a, it's a beautiful layer of connection that's going on here. And if I had more time, I would take you around every single one of the people on that table and I could chat to them for an hour without question. But now we're off to the Cockatoo Community House, who were actually a big inspiration behind 
um, the running of this event today because they were, you guys, you girls were, were, were one of the first group that said, hey, we, we want to have our own great local lunch if we can't come down by, by the banks of the, the river at South Bank. We'll have our own gathering and, you know, you've got your own local sustainable scene going on and connecting with all of us. So um, we've got um, from up at uh, Cockatoo Community House, we've got coordinator uh, Gabby Higgins. Gabby, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Costa. And I'm here with Brody from the... Oh, there she is. We're at the Hills uh, Community no, Gardens uh, with Brody from Hills Herbal Collective and the Hills Community Gardens. And um, yeah, we're, we're on our Wurundjeri country coming to you. And uh, we've just had a local lunch from produce from the gardens and from local growers and uh, all cooked up by our local chef, Edith Kalunga. And uh, we're just about to enjoy some apple muffins made with apple flour, which is something we discovered in this process. Oh, apple muffins and apple flour. Well, they look absolutely scrumptious. Um, so look, your, your group is all about advice and support. Explain to people how you're fitting in and engaging with your community. Because I think this is what today's all about, these different scales whether it was Bomb Beach, whether it was you, whether it was Ceres. There's so many layers involved with community food and community food systems. How, how is yours working? I guess what we realised was there was so much going on locally with a lot of the volunteer organisations. So much was happening down at the Hills Community Gardens and the local township committee connecting cockatoo communities gave away 200 garden kits to local community members and the first release of that was fully subscribed in four hours so we went wow there's so much energy here for this what can we as a neighborhood house do to uh to support all that volunteer work that's going on so we got uh, a couple of part-time staff through working for victoria project and started the cockatoo sustainable food project and uh They've been offering advice to new gardeners and trying to network and get people together. Uh, and as part of that, they set up a, a display garden down at the Hills Community Gardens, which Brody might like to tell you a little bit about. Hi, Costa. Hey, how are you going? Tell us about it. Yeah, well, I'll just quickly show you everyone else who's here. Say hi, guys. Hello. Oh, hello, everyone. Thanks for... Thanks for committing to the to the great local lunch. I, I can see your awesome table there and look at all that produce. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, so we're, as um, Gabby said, we've just had a really nice lunch. And um, yeah, so down at the gardens, um, yeah, things are kind of really happening at the moment. We've got a, um, a few different um, projects and grants coming. We're gonna be um, growing and um, I always say this wrong, orchard. I was going to say orchid. <laughs> Growing an orchard. Um, and we're also doing a native pollinator garden, which we're super excited about. Um, so there's lots of projects going on this year that we would absolutely love support from with the community, um, which is really helpful because we have been connecting with all the little groups in the community at the moment. So, And the produce swap is, is a, a, a valuable uh, community builder? Yeah, well, um, each month there's the cockatoo um, community market and um, we have, uh, it's called the Seed Fairy, fairy, fairy seed fairy. <laughs> and that's been going for many years and so we're kind of um, supporting them now. It's kind of been like passing the baton on at the moment really. There's been a lot going on in previous years and decades and now we're kind of like um, getting new people coming in and supporting mm -hmm. with what's already been going on. So it's a really energetic time at the moment so yeah and people can connect with you at both cockatoo community garden house and hills community gardens hills on community facebook garden. yes yep. that's right yeah that's the that's the best place for people to yes. to connect and get involved you are you on the lookout for new members 
Absolutely. <laughs> we you have heard it first. Veg down here that are very much wanting some TLC and some veggies and whatever you want to grow in there. So, um, yeah. So next Saturday, we're actually got a, like a harvest and a dig in, 6th of March come from like 10 o'clock till about 1 30 and um yeah we've also got a medicinal garden bed up here as well so it's um lots of different projects going on down at the one garden wow well what a pleasure to see your table the produce that you've shared but most of all all of those different food projects that you're engaging the community with and it's a wonderful it's a wonderful hub of information for other people watching to go to, to, to replicate what you're, what you're up to. Um, so, so thanks for being a, a part of uh, the, the 2021 Great Local Lunch. It's wonderful to, to see what you're up to and been doing. Thanks. Paul. Thank you. See ya. Have a great afternoon and uh, see you later, everyone around the table. Bye. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, so now from um, from the uh, Hills Community Gardens and and the Cockatoo Community House, let's head over to the South Melbourne Sustainability Group. And I believe that's uh, is that Andrew Andrew McCarthy. That's right. Hi, Costa. G'day, Andrew. You uh, how are you? So you yeah, really good. Wonderful to have you you join us. I know that you guys are really busy when it comes to to projects in public gardens. We're super busy. We're coming to you from the Lyle Ifla um, Community Garden, which is in a public park on Boomerang Country. Um, we just had a big working bee this morning at 11 o'clock and everyone is just a little bit away from me so that I can hear you um, having a big lunch at a produce that was grown here and across a few different community gardens in public spaces around South Melbourne. What sort of uh, food was harvested and turned into your great local very oh, local lunch. Heaps of stuff. There was a, I think a beetroot galette. There was a lot of tomato bruschettas. There was a big tart made from every green you could imagine in the gardens. Um, radish salads and bakewell tarts and sorrel sauces. There was a, a lot of stuff and it was from all over the suburb because we're, we're managing all these spaces in uh, different public parks. Does it amaze you at what can be produced in these these pockets and these spaces that would otherwise be a maintenance nightmare for council? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the South Melbourne Sustainability Group is all about what you can do for sustainability in really high density living. We're just a stone's throw from where you usually host the lunch over at Birrung Mar. We're like in some of the densest living spaces in the country. And it's amazing when you just, you take a small unloved space, look after it properly, put in lots of, um, lots of your kitchen scraps and get food out of it. So you've got a, a good uh, program of composting going on in these gardens to build to build their uh, their soil. I hear. Yeah, um, it kind of, that's kind of where the group when um, where it sprung out of. Initially, we were just a few local residents who were trying to restore a, a little neglected community garden in a public park. And what we found, rather rather than go through the expense of restoring it with you know with going to the hardware store, getting compost, getting manures, is that we actually had this untapped resource, which was everybody's kitchen waste. And as soon as we reached out for it and did a little bit of publicity, it's just like the, the demands just surged. We did about, I think it was about six and a half thousand kilos of kitchen scraps went into these tiny pocket gardens around South Melbourne last year, and mainly as Bokashi compost. Wow, that's, I mean, that's impressive in terms of, of diverting that food waste, but then, turning it into the food lunch that, that you had today effectively. Well, that's the big step. And that's what we're, we're trying to talk to people about is that it's not just about creating your compost, but it's about creating that circular economy so that the food comes out the other end and there's, there's nothing to worry about in terms of excess soil or anything to deal with. You can deal with it all, even in the most dense urban spaces in the country. And are you finding that your education programs are, are hitting the money? Are, are people taking up the the separation and the composting absolutely and, and, and seeing seeing this 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 circular result yep it's just growing and growing i think from you know the first year we started with about 700 kilos then we went up to 1400 and then it tripled last year we actually found that during lockdown people were getting more and more interested and they were reaching out to the internet and joining us on facebook and learning about what we do to see how they could participate and then this lunch is a big part of that today too because we've got three local counselors here who have come along 
to actually see what we're doing in person for the first time and taste the produce that's coming out of the waste that we're diverting from their landfill streams. Well, congratulations on getting the, the councillors there as well. That Thanks. is a really positive result because it's fine to be doing these projects, but it has to go up the chain and resonate right to the I'm top. I was just moving over just a little bit because I think they're, they're all behind me having a chat. They've brought their kids along and a little oh, bit fantastic. further over there's picnic tables where everyone's got having their lunch. Well, Andrew, uh, big congratulations. Thank you for um, participating in a, a great local lunch in your garden there. Uh, keep up the, uh, the amazing work. And for anyone um, wanting more information, jump on to South Melbourne Sustainability Group on Instagram and Facebook and just follow what they're up to, uh, replicate what they're doing, take those ideas and uh, turn them into, into compost gold and, uh, and circular, circular success. Thanks, Costa. Thanks for a great event today. See you later, Andrew. See ya. Wow. How good was that? Such, such a great result. And I know... I can hear in my window there that, uh, that the meal has been served, served to the crowd and uh, they're very happy. But we've got Packnam Community Garden jumping and ready at the bit, which makes me very happy. Now, um, now is that you, Max? It is me, Costa. Max, I can see that you have a fantastic long table lunch going on there. Just give you a better view. Hello, everyone. What sort of food has been prepared onto that table? Well, Costa, um, right, now, we're, right now we're just at entree stage. It's been, uh, it's been a bit to, to get going and get everyone around the table, but we've got about, say, about 30 people here across, uh, from across the, the southeast region. Um, right now people are, people are tasting what this vegetable is, which is the crookneck squash. Um, the crookneck squash, what a treat! Uh, and I can't show you what we what I ended up making, but basically just sliced very thinly with parmesan cheese on top, salt and pepper in the oven, twenty minutes, and it's beautiful. Wow! Um, and what other what other delights have been harvested and and shared? Oh look! Well, I was working for Thriving Foods Farm yesterday down in Kuirup, and I brought up some beetroot that I've put into a roast beetroot and yogurt and za'atar dip. Um, also, some garlic from uh, Wattle Gully Produce. Um, that's from Farmer Tanisa um, up in Broadford, and we made some uh, some hummus from scratch. Um, and we've got bread, and we've got a, uh, some heirloom tomatoes that we've just sliced very thinly, so people can taste the full freshness of uh, of the season down here, even with a very late summer. Um, yeah, and then I mean, there's also all all the other foods that people have prepared too. I'm just you know selfish and talking about my own dishes, but um, we've got some smoked chicken. So we've got just here. I'm going to pan over. Um, and before I introduce you to other speakers, um, I'd just like to acknowledge that we're meeting here on the traditional lands of the Bunurong and the, uh, the Wurundjeri peoples. Um, and, uh, and so we've got um, Abby Lane here. She's going to be speaking to, uh, uh, speaking about the Cardinia Food Network um, yes. shortly. And I've got uh, Mama Kuya Tuazama here, who's the, uh, one of the leaders of the United African Farm. Um, and we're very, we're very privileged to be joined by one of the founding members of the Packenham Community Garden here over on the, on the, on the left or the right, um, Mary, Mary from, uh, from Packenham. Um, and then everyone else is just um, regular attendees to uh, some community. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so tell us a little bit, um, Abby, about the Cardinia Food Network. Okay, so there's a, it's a group of, you've got people from all over Cadenia, so you've got people who are growers, you've got people who are backyard growers and seed savers, you've got people who are just like really good food. Um, and so everybody's coming together to do an awful lot of, um, in conjunction with like Monash Uni and oh, Monash Health, uh, the council, that sort of thing. So lots of different groups coming together in order to promote local food, local food growing, and also to support all the local farmers as well as part of the Canadian food movement. And uh, Cardinia Food Movement is part of the urban urban agriculture urban agriculture Australia and strongly connected 
to sustain, sustain the Australian Food Network, which is running Urban Agriculture Month come April, which is going Absolutely. to be a fantastic, fantastic event. So everyone keep an eye out for that because it's online. So everyone will be able to attend. And I know that, that Nick Rose and, and the movement are, are heavily based in projects in your area, which is fantastic. What about Mama? Let's, uh, we can we hear a little bit about, uh, about what, what she is up to? Uh, first of all, I want to give God almighty thanks that he gave us the ability to organize the United African Farm. And the United African Farm project is not just about growing food, it's about growing our culture, our value, our way of life. And our hope and dream is to bring our kids, the elderly together to teach them because usually on the farm is where our grandparents can tell us all stories and show us what to do as we grow. So, you know, you cannot tell the kids a story when they are hungry. So when we grow the food and we cook on the farm in the evening when everyone has eaten, then we sit and listen to what life is, the real meaning of life. So this is our dream. And then oh. we want to see the United African farm growing across the world because we want to train our children according to our culture because there are a lot of great value in our culture. We have dances, we have different kinds of food and the African, as we all are aware that we can sing. I can sing and I can dance. Uh, <laughs> mama. I'm not going to dance until I get on the farm. Then you will see cultural performances. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mama. It's wonderful to hear about the, the movement and uh, I look forward to hearing more about it. Um, Max and everyone, thank you for uh, joining in the, the, uh, the great local lunch. Thank you for bringing your community together and, uh, and everyone, you can keep an eye on all the activities that the Packnam Community Garden are up to online. So jump on and follow them and learn more about them. Thanks a lot, Max. And thanks everyone. Thanks, Costa. Okay. Thanks everyone. Uh, thank you, Max. All right, now we're going to head to uh, three more of our garden visits. And I wanted to, to, to jump in with, uh, with one of our, our guests, uh, Venetia Scott, and, uh, and get her to have a look at, to have a look. Oh, yeah, well, maybe, yeah, maybe bring Venetia out. We, we could, it's probably a bit, a bit hard to shift everything inside. So we'll get Venetia. Yeah, we'll bring Venetia out. And, uh, oh, Lucia. Ciao, Lucia. Ciao, Costa, come va? Bene, bene. Okay, come in, Venetia. Okay, Venetia, I want you to meet, I, I want you to meet Lucia. Hi, Lucia. And Hello. Lucia, Hello. Lucia show, us, show us your harvest. What have you been up to? How do I do that? Um, can you, can, oh. Uh, well, no, I've that's got, Jennifer. Uh, how do how do I? I've, oh goodness, I'm not very good with technology. I've got to be told what to do. Oh, okay. Um, can you turn the camera around? Can you push the little button that has a uh, camera, and that way you can turn it around and uh, and and uh, otherwise you have to turn the full camera around. Oh, is that it? Yeah, where are you pointing it? Yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, good on you. Right. <laughs> you Thank you. You are a tech head. <laughs> Thank you. You are a tech I... genius. <laughs> right, Costa. I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm too old for technology. So um, I'm showing you a green Thai curry. Can you see it? A green Thai? Oh, yes, we can. And it's all vegetarian out of the garden except for two things. It's nine ingredients out of my garden. Oh, can we can we go without? Yeah. Okay. What are the ingredients? 
The ingredients are green beans, Madagascar beans, celery. Oh, uh, hang on a sec, Lucia. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Delicious, yeah. whatever it is. Okay, can, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so okay. what's okay. So I've got Madagascar beans, green beans, celery, zucchini, cucumelons, kale and the stalks, capsicum, and then lime, uh, kefir lime leaves and chilies. These are all out of my garden. You grew all of that. Can you hear? Yeah. yeah. That's really impressive, especially the yes. celery. That's really hard to grow. Yes, yeah, so I use the Madagascar beans instead of meat. Amazing. Where are you, Lucia? Where's your garden? In Mount Pleasant. Uh, no, Mount Kembla in New South Wales. Amazing. That's oh. such an incredible variety of food to be coming out of the garden this time of year. I, re I'm, I grow full time and I'm struggling to get that sort of diversity, especially the celery. That's really impressive. <laughs> yes, and I've got those of the Madagascar beans when they're dry. And these are, uh, then before they're dry, I freeze them. And they're very high in protein. That's before. That's oh, frozen. Oh, is that with yeah. the frozen with the little uh, encasing shells on them? Yes. Amazing. The others are cucumelons. Aren't they yeah. sweet? They're so oh. sweet, cucumelons. Have you put them in your lunch? Yes, they're in there. I've halved them and put them in there. How long have you been growing for, Lucia? Oh, most of my life. But where I lived before, I had only shade, so I couldn't really grow um, the things that I grow now. Now, I grow a lot of other things, like the zucchini that I picked just before I came on. And uh, I grow a lot of things, including okra and that, although the okra is not done very well this year. But I have a large family. I've got 15 grandchildren. So oh. I, even though oh. I live alone, I supply them. Uh, Lucia, thank you for showing us around. We're going to move on to our next garden now. And uh, wow, what a great green curry. What Incredible. do you reckon, Venetia? We're, we're coming over for dinner. We'll I'm see so you in an hour. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Costa. Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, Venetia, we are off to our next garden now. And I believe that is Lucinda, uh, I think. No, we've, we've, we've got in... Jennifer here coming to visit us now. Okay, Jennifer. Uh, actually, it's Jennifer's husband, Ben, but Jennifer does a lot of the uh, um, preserving. So uh, here's just a collection of a few things we grow. And um, I'll just go for a quick tour because we've got um, wicking beds outside that we grow a lot of things in. All right, give us a quick look, Ben. So sorry, uh, hello, Costa. I forgot with the formalities. Oh, that's all right. And I'm here with uh, Venetia too. Hi, Venetia. Hello. Been enjoying uh, everything that's happening. Oh, it's such a beautiful day. This is one. Of, this is the nicest thing I can be doing today. Oh, it's a, it's a gorgeous day down here in Central Victoria too. This is just our fernery. We've got um, raspberries, um, some aloe vera growing, and a lot of um, um, uh, other um, shade loving plants. And out the back here is. Um, uh, a whole lot of old bars that we're using as wicking beds and uh, yeah, growing a lot of produce in them. So they've been really good. That's really, that's incredible. What a, what a great reuse for those old bathtubs for anyone watching when you see old spas and bathtubs on the street. Well, <laughs> look, there's, there's even a couple, there's even a couple just here next to us. Um, so, so, um, well, look, thank you for, Thank you for taking the time to show us around. Yeah, no worries. Uh, we had a rooster crying earlier, but he's wandered down to be with the rest of his girlfriends, so uh, he's not providing back background noise at the moment. So thank you, and uh, I'm enjoying the rest of the day, so look forward to the rest of it. No worries. Cheers, Ben. Thanks, Thanks Ben. Bye. So, see ya. So, Nathan, we're now off to catch up with Giselle. Wow. Can you go Hello. <laughs> Hi, Giselle. Hi, so nice to see you. Familiar faces, beautiful backdrop there. <laughs> Tell us what you've prepared and what you've harvested and and uh, and gleaned from from your garden for the for the uh, festival. 
Well, as you know, Costa, I live in, a, in an intentional community, a co-housing community in the suburbs of Melbourne. And that garden is totally booming at the moment. Um, and, you know, the food, I wish I could, I'm, I'm actually not on site at the moment. I'm sorry, so I can't show you the amazing garden. But that garden has more functions than just growing food. I mean, it's a place that we hang out in, especially during COVID, we could have meetings at distance there and, and connect a little bit. But also it attracts people. And we've had, you mentioned local councillors before, Costa, um, who are attending one of the other gardens there that you've just been interviewing. And we've had our mayor come to our garden numerous times because it's a nice place to come. He loves coming to the community, but I, I really feel that the productivity and the, the functionality of the community is expressed through the garden so well. So it, it's, it's a draw card. And yeah, so um, I do have grown some of my own food. I've grown some tomatoes. I actually eat them raw. They're lucky to make it inside <laughs> um, and into my cooking. I just love eating them and had a bumper crop with fruit too, with pears and plums and apricots and apples and peaches are coming on now for joas and next mulberries, all that sort of stuff. So that's what I've been doing in my garden too. Well, it's an absolute treat to have had you on. Um, I know the wonderful work that your cooperative household uh, produces in your garden. Thanks for, thanks for sharing us and, and being a part of uh, the Great Local Lunch 2021 and, and see you maybe, uh, you know, all, all going well. But I, I think we'll be doing something like this in some capacity next year as well, uh, whether we're on the river or not, because I think we could do we could do both. Yeah, and I agree. I, I would yeah. like to just say one, give one message, which is that while we're doing all this wonderful work with food, I think that now we we have to say a little bit more to people about why we're doing it and put it in a context of the of the climate situation that we're facing and the need for transformative change. And this is just one happy way of expressing that transformative change but there's a lot of other work to be done and I would just encourage people to use their voice wherever they have a way of expressing it just to put it in a context and try and encourage others to learn more and step up and speak out thanks for having me on okay Giselle thank you bye bye I'm pulling you up from your lunch Look, I'm halfway through my meal cost. Halfway through. Oh, well, well, thanks, Matt. I would hold a feeding <laughs> hangout with you, mate. This is... <laughs> I've, I've dragged. I wanted, I, I wanted Venetia to come out and in, in one sentence, mm -hmm. uh, tell people about the, the agroecology. Agroecology. So we're growing food within um, ecological context. So we look to the forest system and we model that to grow our food. So, yeah, we're, we are basically building a beautiful food forest at the farm. It's, it's um, such a regenerative. And as to the point Giselle was saying, you know, I feel like the, the garden is where all life comes together. So it's not just the plant life, it's also the community life. Yeah. And the life in our souls and spirits. It's just, yeah, it's such good work. Well. Venetia, thank you for, for dropping in. Go and uh, complete the rest of that lunch because I can smell lunch. it. Yeah. <laughs> thank All right. You. Thank See you. Ya. See ya. Okay, our next visit is off to the dairy. And um, it's interesting because as we start to come, oh, look, look at that team. They are fired up. They are really fired up. Hello, everyone. Um, we're getting to that stage of the day where, you know, we, well, I mean, from, from the start of the day, we've been looking forward. As we get to this stage of the day, we want to look even further forward about the future of food and farming models, farming models that can sustain these local food systems. And you've heard about it in all different contexts today. And even Venetia there talking about the model and the system that she's using to grow productive food. Now we're heading to the dairy because this is a unique family farm project. And a few of its founders, Ben Shaw and Kitty Walker, I think they're there. Can you hear me, guys? We are. G'day, oh, Cosmo. I haven't quite got you. Uh, let me just do the volume up a bit. Yeah, there we go. Now, tell me, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> so um, 
Oh, hang on. Are you still there? Yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, I've got you. I've got you. Um, oh, ha hang on a sec. Is that, is that, is that, I thought, when, when I, stop it. That's hilarious. I sort of looked and I thought, oh, someone's got masks on. Um, and and the, the, these are the best masks. I, I think I think we could call a national lockdown, and everyone has to wear a mask like like the dairy. That is. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You got me so good. It's it's almost bad. <laughs> you got me bad. You got me good. And and around again. Well, that girls and boys, they are the best. That is the best surprise for, for the year for me. That is the best one. Oh, okay. Now let me regroup. I have to try and concentrate looking at, look at this, look at this zucchini face mask. That is a massive marrow. So tell us, tell us a little bit about the dairy and what, what the project represents from a, from a food, from a food system. Well, g'day Costa, it's been started in COVID last year in about to grow food and enjoy all the benefits of growing food, but uh, we saw an opportunity to all get together and grow more food um, and things that we can preserve and uh, store. And um, so in the space of eight months, we've turned a little paddock um, on a farm. I'm lucky enough to work with some lovely families down here and turn a bare space into this really productive, um, uh, what would we call it? Our, uh, it's, a mar it's not a market garden right from the start. We didn't, it's a dairy. It's a dairy. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be an old dairy. So that's why we're called the dairy. Um, and yeah, it's just been an incredible experience for everyone. So very positive. So it's a group of farmers sharing land provided by a local farmer is that correct not a group of farmers um so a group of families group of families families yeah exactly so and how much land did the farmer provide you what is that? how big <laughs> can you see yes we can see There you go. Just context. Yeah. So this this patch was about waist high in Kaikuya grass when we started. Um, so it's been, I think, just brings together a lot of different skills. Everyone's got, whether it's cooking skills, gardening, uh, putting up fences. Uh, we, everyone's just chipped and chipped in, and it hasn't been a chore at all. In fact, we're all really keen to get out here and do a little bit of gardening and then we end the day with some lovely food and music and yeah it's been it's been a cracking experience i think for everyone and i think what you're touching on is this land sharing opportunity uh, i mean what what is that area did you say 50 square meters no 550 square meters so 550 square meters on the back end of a farm that that was just overgrown and unused and here you are creating a project of food security for, for your families, but a model for others to look at because there's land like that on farms in every community everywhere around the country. That's right. And I think there's quite a few of us involved in this project that see a lot of land being underutilised. Um, and this was just a, a great way to, for people to get together and... Uh, start using the land in a more efficient way and you know this summer we're harvesting so much food um and i think from the start there wasn't a pressure to sell the produce or um so the financial side of it wasn't a stressful thing at all we all chipped in a little bit of money at the start um and it's sort of flowed from there and yeah 
Wow. Where can people find out a little bit more about what you're doing so they can think about replicating your model? Well, I think because of COVID, we haven't all had time to sit down as a group to see, because it's such a new project, um, we've all got to sit down and have a chat about that, I suppose, Costa. But yeah, um, it's amazing how many people that are asking about, are sort of hearing about it. Um and sort of want to be involved. So I, we hope that it's, it can be a model that can be shared and because it's worked, it's the proof's in the pudding. We're, you know, we're harvesting so much food today and the kid, the kids actually wanted to tell you what we've been harvesting. Is that all right? Yeah. Tell me, what have you been harvesting girls and boys? Clara? Uh, some zucchini. Zucchini. Yeah. yeah. What else? What else? Corn. Corn. Potatoes. Potatoes. Capsicum. Gherkins. Gherkins. Cucumbers. <laughs> yep, Clara. Tomatoes. 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 <laughs> Carrots. <laughs> lettuce. <laughs> rock melon. Leeks. 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 Onion. I think you get the picture, Costa. With uh, wow. Of course. Yeah, we've harvested so much food. It's been amazing. Yeah. Well, look, you you have broken ground here, as usual, the National Sustainable Living Festival, breaking new ideas here live at the Great, great Local Lunch. First, nationally significant models being, being displayed here for the first time at the festival. So to all of you girls and boys, thank you for the awesome beards you've put on for me today. And to each and every one of you family members, what a model. I can't wait to see this grow and be replicated by people watching this today and thinking, how can we declare that we care in ways to look after the future of our food system? So, uh, wow, you, you've really inspired me. That, that's, that is, that's amazing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Costa. Wow. Whoa. That one's, that one's overwhelming. I'm, I'm welling up. Oh. Mm. Now it's brought me to tears because everyone, everyone that we've seen today are pieces of this big puzzle. And when, when we see children and families, I mean, you think about mama. I mean, there was mamas there at the dairy, yet we had mama at the, at the Cardinia group. And, and, and the story, the story's inside us. The story's inside all of us and we're all part of this puzzle. And this great local lunch is, as, as Mama said, she said, we can't tell stories if we haven't eaten because we can't receive the ideas and we can't be in a, a place where we feel safe and content to receive new information, to change who we are and what we do. And, you know, to see those children and, and to know that they're becoming part of a, of, of, of a food-centred life where that because that, that, the food is at the center of your life you, you if you don't have food inside your stomach you're not alive and yeah well that's that one's um that's that's just these are happy tears <laughs> they're happy tears because because it's it's what it's what everyone i mean it's what andrea and luke and the sustainable living festival is about it's what the urban agriculture forum is about it's what everyone around the table from from Clayton and, and cooking to to the, the welcome and the connection to country I mean this is a wrap up <laughs> it, it shouldn't be because we've got one more to go and this one's gonna make me, this one might make me cry a bit more too because growing farmers is the next step um oh geez hang on I oh, know don't hang on we've got to plow on <laughs> We've got to plow on. Growing farmers, this project is going to make me even more excited because, because growing farmers is about 
is about developing these regenerative caring caring practice of land uh, in urban areas and saying, well, well, you, you know, how do we connect urban? How do we connect a, a, a farmer? How do we connect a grower with a farmer and then a host? Like we need the land. Like the the, the dairy is a great example of land sharing. Now, guys, growing farmers, tell me because I'm waffling a bit. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed, and you're going to push me over the edge. I think. <laughs> but, um, we try not to. Me. We try not to. No, no, push me, push me. <laughs> we'll push tell you. me, <laughs> tell me about your project because we're just. This is amping. This is ramping. The, the, the local lunch is ramping to a big finish, and I'm so excited about you guys uh, bringing in the, the 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 final group we're talking to. Tell us about what you're about because I love it. Sure. So um, we've got Alice, Sapphire, Katie, and myself, George here, and we're in Faulkner. Uh, on Wurundjeri land and we're in a backyard which is Sapphire's backyard um, so Sapphire is the landowner and Katie and myself are the growers learning how to farm in someone else's backyard and Alice is the facilitator or like represents the organization that's made this possible and so since November last year we've been growing produce um, on shared land in Sapphire's backyard and access to land was a real big hurdle for us to overcome so this project's just allowed us to do things that we thought might not be possible for quite a while it's so beautiful to see a project like this there's a there's a another another project that developed in this same vein was spoken spade in melbourne where where simeon was going around acquiring small front yards and backyards and doing this but you're really taking this to that to that next level um how does it feel as a as a backyard uh owner to be able to present your yard for such a wonderful group to to provide for our food future uh, it's just it's delightful um i had a, a very active housemate in the front yards all garden and food and fruit trees and the backyard was just this kaikuyu that was this endless chore to mow and it was like i wish there was just people who would come and make it productive and here they are they're lovely and, and it is productive look we have tomatoes and tomatillos and basil oh the basil's so good and it's it just yeah it was an answer to all all of my wishing just and better the people are so much better than you imagine is possible alice i mean you meet someone like this how does it make you feel for the future of the project when when you start to to, to lure this out of the community this 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 gold Honestly, we could not have found better people in our community to bring this project forward. Um, Sapphire has been so generous and our other backyard hosts have been so generous putting their backyards forward. Katie and George are just, they're so into their growing. We just, we love it. It's not just growing food, but it's building community. And so it's just such a, you know, being able to unlock land for farming so that we within our own community can build resilience and be able to produce food in a way that is good for the earth, like we've been talking about regenerative farming and agroecology, but to really put that into practice. Um, so, and we've met just an awesome bunch of people along the way. Oh, wow. And, and as the growers, how, how do you both feel to be able to become small scale market gardener farmers and be able to apply your new knowledge and and to learn and understand the hardships that that any grower has to face and roll the dice of yeah amazing like very lucky um to be given this opportunity because a lot of the barriers and the risks have been sort of removed or lowered for us we haven't had to sort of get into debt or move away from our community to do this to make this possible so it's just been like a fantastic opportunity and we're growing alongside other people, which is such an amazing thing. We're not trying to do this on our own. It's such a, a group, a team effort, which makes it a lot more um, achievable, I think, which is, yeah, very exciting. And it also pushes us along as well. It's good to know there's, you know, people seeing how we're progressing and we've got the mentorship, which is amazing. So we can't get too overwhelmed and want to go home. Like, <laughs> well, not just yet. I mean, with that, with that level, with that level of, um, with that level of excitement, Alice, what's what's planned? What are you seeing for, for growing farmers? Well, this is, so this is a pilot project. So um, 
all, Katie and George and Sapphire have been like really generous in um, coming along through all the messiness of this first project. Um, but we'd love to get more backyard farms up and running. And we've got a plan um, to get some land within our local government area, which is Moreland in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. Um, for a big farm, which we can start up a training farm where people can work in community together, you know, just like we're doing on a smaller scale here in the backyard farm. So, yeah, we're, and we'd love to inspire other people. We were inspired by a group in the Blue Mountains called Farm at Forward. Farm at Forward. I was yeah. just going to say that. Um, so, so that is who you got your inspiration from? Yeah. From, Manu, have... from, from Manu and the team? Yeah, we had a few ideas and then we had a few calls with them where we, you know, kind of worked out what they were doing and they gave us, gave us some pointers. And, um, yeah, then we just ran with it. But what we'd love to do is, um, you know, inspire other people to do the same in their communities. And, you know, we'll look in the future to making all our process and our documents. I mean, we've had pro bono legal help and all that sort of thing along the way that's, you know, sets the foundation under this. Um, so, you know, we'd love to make our, our process and our documents open source so that this can just grow. You know, we need more of this. We need communities being resilient and able to take care of themselves. Well, congratulations to all three, all, all four of you there. Can we quickly show you our lunch just very quickly? Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> that's for you, Costa. <laughs> Did you catch it? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, that was tasty. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good, right? <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. You have put it out there to everyone watching that our No Backyard is safe. Growing Farmers is coming at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you later. Thanks, Thanks Costa. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Well, guess what? It's time to wrap. And uh, I'm, I, am, I am so full. I just want to, I want to gather everyone. Hey, can everyone come together for a, a, a final, um, fair, just, just sort of maybe stand here or gather around. Um, so we're still live. We're still live. Come in, come in, Joel jump up um wow well sadly that's all we got time for today and as you've seen what a day it's been um thanks to everyone every single one of the gardeners that joined us on those crazy rambles to all the community groups that have joined in and shared their models and shared what they're up to to everyone who prepared some food to everyone who harvested some food to everyone just bought the food in and didn't even make the harvest or didn't even make the, 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 the cook up. Um, thanks for, for, for joining in on this great local lunch online version for 2021. Um, all our contributors, I, I got to give a big call out, of course, to the Sustainable Living Festival for, for backing this event and not sort of throwing it in the too hard basket, which as you know, for many events, it's just been too hard. And, and specifically, uh, Andrea Kimball, Andrea Kimball for an incredible event, um, not just today, but also for the wonderful event that uh, Dirt Girl and Scrap Boy and I participated in, in yesterday, the Now Festival, which you can watch on Facebook and on YouTube, uh, get the family together uh, around and watch that. Um, it was a fantastic day. Um, I want to give uh, special thanks also to uh, Marie Lowe's, who helped organise uh, the people that I see um, around around the table here today. Um, it's been it's been wonderful. Of course, you couldn't be part of all these conversations, but just bringing eight, nine, ten people like this together, like the eight, nine, or ten people that have been together in your community gardens, or whether it was the growing farmers coming together and sharing your news and information. That's what this event is about. Uh, it overwhelmed me before um, because I feel the passion that all of these people feel and are living day to day around the future of our food. They don't just declare they care today for the festival, they care every day and they're driving this change. Um, remember, all of the links for the organisations and all of these wonderful people, all of the links to them. And that's the key. That's, it's not just today. 
follow follow everyone here because you're going to suddenly find a whole new pulse of connection to the future of our food. These people and all the people that have been on here, all their links will be on slf.org.au. So you can join these growers and gleaners on their pages and keep up with what they're up to. Stay tuned for the next great local lunch um, because I think it will have some sort of configuration like this. And can I ask you each for one word as a parting, um, as a parting thought on what, how, who, and why food is our future? Uh, where will I start? Uh, I'll give you hope. Hope. Yeah. Children. Punk. <laughs> Reverence. Togetherness. Inspiring. Uh, Gee. Uh, connection. Fair. Life. That's it. All that and more. To all our technical team that made it happen, Cameron McKenzie, Kate McQuillan, thank you. Everyone at the SLF, everyone here on those words, I call it. That's it from the 2021 Great Local Lunch. Thanks everyone and thank you, yeah.